All right, we're back with Squeaky Chair Productions. All right, so um, this video is going to be on budgeting. All right, so I, you know, in one of my videos, I did a um, a video on addiction and how the best way to get rid of one addiction is to get addicted to something else. So people that you know are alcoholics or drug addicts or spendaholics or any of that other stuff, if they replace it with a positive. Um, if you replace it with a positive addiction, then it's easier or more helpful to um, to get off of the bad addiction. So um, I have found that after quitting drinking and smoking and, and eating fast food and all that other stuff, drinking coffee and everything, that I'm addicted to numbers. I'm addicted to math. I'm addicted to money. I'm addicted to the calculations of all of that. Um, I love mathematical equations and trying to figure them out and... Um, and, and budgeting and all of that stuff. Like, I, I'm, I really enjoy that stuff. So, um, you know, talking to my family and kids, it drives them nuts when I lecture them about money and I lecture them about numbers and all that other stuff um, because I go over the bank statements and all that other stuff and we, we discuss how you can trim fat and, and you know, get back on a, uh, on a, a positive um, financial budget. So this video here is going to be on budgeting. And basically... A 50, 30, 20 budget. It's one of the most basic budgets that you can have, but it, it gives you a very good understanding and visualization of, um, of where your money is, where it should be, and how you could be financially more secure in the future. Or, or tomorrow, you know what I mean? Depending on how you um, figure all these numbers out. Most people who spend money don't know on a monthly basis exactly how much money they're spending or where it's all going. You know, which is um, a little bit scary, you know, if you think about it. So here we go. So you could do this one of two ways. You can either go get a pen and paper and you could write this down as I'm saying it. And you could do your own mathematical equation on where your stuff fits in. Um, or you can take the information, pause the video and, and figure it all out um, and then see where yours is. And, you know, comment below and let me know if this has actually helped or if it's asinine or it doesn't any help at all you know because any information about these videos definitely helps out to make uh me have you know better future videos all right so the 30 20 the 50 30 20 budget first of all you take all your money right you take um how much you make a month and you take it after taxes have been taken out right so your taxes have been taken out, your state tax, your federal tax, your whatever tax that you have is taken out, right? The only thing that that if they take out, you put back in is if they like, if they take money out for retirement, you know, for like a 401k or something like that, the amount every month that they put it, take out, put that back into this, this after tax um, number. Also, if they take out health care costs, you know, if they take out health care costs, then put that back into this after tax number, right? Because those two, um, those two are should be basically your responsibility. And in this 50, 30, 20, you'll see that later on in in the uh, in the 50, you know that's where some of this money is going to be coming out. You know, well, f you'll figure it out. 50 is for the healthcare, 20 is for retirement. So, um, uh, so your 50 percent needs, right? 50 percent is your needs, things that you can't live without, things that are the most important for you. Things like groceries because you have to eat. Things like, um, you know, your rent because, you know, you have to have a roof over your head. Things like utilities because you have to have electricity. Yeah, you have to have electricity. Can you imagine living in a house with no electricity at all? I'm sure that people have done it and, you know, but I would imagine it's pretty miserable. So it's definitely a need. Um, health insurance, car payment, car insurance, all of these things are... Um, are, are definitely needs if you if you need a car that is you know if, if you ride a bike or you take a bus you, you know whatever then it's not necessarily need so now you take 50 percent of of what you make and those are your needs everything that you need in life should fall into that 50 percent all right so now 30 percent your 30 percent is your wants right well first of all let me back up a little bit what's the difference between a need and a want okay a need is something that, um, like any payment that you can't forego or that you can forego with, with minimal, 
um, inconvenience is a need, is a want. Like, for instance, you can go without your cable bill, right? It, it, it would stink, you know, it would suck to do that, but you could do that, right? So, so that's not a need. You don't need that. That's a want. You can't go without your electricity bill, right? If you don't pay your electricity bill, then, you, you know, you're going to be sitting in the dark. And there's not much things you can do without refrigeration, without, you know, water heater and all of those things that, that run off electricity. So you have to pay your electric bill. Um, things like, um, what was another good example? Um, like a winter coat, right? A winter coat is, is a need. You need to have a winter coat because it's going to be snowing outside. A want is a mink winter coat. You know, you don't need a mink winter coat or five winter coats. You don't need five winter coats. You need the need is one. The rest are a want. You know what I mean? So you have to be able to decipher um, the difference between um, your needs and your wants. Another need, another need is like a credit card payment, right? The minimum credit card payment is a need. You have to pay that because if you don't, it's going to ruin your credit report, right? So that's a need. But most people who like, let's say your minimal credit, your minimum credit card payment is like 60 bucks. Some people will round it up and pay 70 so they can quickly, you know, pay it off or they'll pay a hundred on a good month or whatever. So the 60, the minimum is the need. The 40 that you're paying, if you're paying 100, that's a want. You, you don't have to do that. You just want to do that so you can quickly pay the stuff off. All right, so um, so any any amount of, above that uh, minimum payment is a want and uh, not a need. So now 30% is your wants, right? Basic necessities. Not necessities. Basic niceties, right? Things that you'd like to have. You'd like to have the cable the oh, cable bill. You would like to have the Starbucks, um, you know, habit that you have. You would like to have not the need clothes because you need to cover your body. You need that winter coat. You need to, you know, not walk outside half naked. This is for the want clothes. This is for the like, I'm going to get instead of five, seven pairs of pants for the week, I'm going to have 12 pairs of pants for the week. Or I'm going to have you know, this special high speed pants or, or, or shirt or sneakers or whatever it is. These are wants. And this is where all your wanting will fall into. Now, and that, now this wanting isn't extravagant vacations and all that other stuff. This is within the 30% means of the amount of money that you make. Now, I'm going to give you an example as we go further towards the end. So right now I know it's just numbers of me saying, you know, 50%, 20%, 30%. But right now it, it's basically... 50% is your needs, 30% is your wants, and now 20% is like um, savings and paying off debts and doing all that other stuff, right? So now 20% of your money is going to go to this just that, paying off your debts, paying off car payments, paying off uh, or extra car payments, paying off extra credit cards, paying off, um, you know, putting money away for your retirement fund, um, putting money away in a savings account. Um, uh, you know, just, just those type of things, you know, um, th those are like extra and added on. But the importance of that is this, if you don't put away 20% or you don't use 20% to pay off your bills and do all that other stuff, then what you're going to find is, is that that 20% is going to quickly morph into your 30%. And it's going to go to Starbucks, and it's going to go to a new pair of shoes, and it's going to go to a new pair of sneakers, and it's going to go to all of these things that you don't need or that aren't a debt payoff that's not part of the 50 or the 20. It's part of the 30, the 30 day of wants. And that's the trickiest part of this budget is because wants get really big really fast. You know, you, you have to eat, right? But you don't have to go out to eat. You know what I mean? You have to feed yourself and you have to live and, and, and have food, but you don't have to eat pizza, you know, eat pizza or go to the Red Lobster or, or go to any of these restaurants every day of the week just because you don't feel like um, cooking, you know? Those are all wants. You know, if you have a busy schedule or whatever and you're like, ah, you know, it would just be so much easier if I just order Chinese food. That's fine, but that's, that's a want, you know, and it can't be something that's a, a consistent thing because it has to fit into that 30%. So now back to 
So 20%, you know, goes to paying off debt and all that other stuff. The quicker you pay off debt, the quicker you pay off all that stuff with this 20%, the 20% then becomes 20% for retirement. So let's say in your 20%, right? Let's say, let's say all 20% goes to debt repaying, you know, because you're just head over heels in debt and credit cards and all the car payments and all that other stuff. So you're just paying all this 20% in, in, in debt. Once the debt gets paid, that 20% can now go to, let's say, 10% debt repay and 5% retirement fund and 5% savings, you know? And then when you have no more debt and you're starting to put money in the bank, now it can go to, you know, that that 20% can go 10% to retirement fund and 10% to savings, you know? And you just keep rolling that forward. So then now in 10 years from now, you have a good solid retirement fund or a good solid savings account that includes your emergency fund. You know, there's nothing worse than having no money and then all of a sudden, you, you know, your tires blow out on your car or your car check engine light comes on and you find out it's a, you know, a, a $500 transmission repair or whatever it is, you know, and you haven't budgeted for that. There really isn't a whole lot worse than that that, that won't make you absolutely nuts. So planning ahead means that, you know, well, I don't have 20% to do that, but you do because you get paid 100%, you know? That's what happens. They pay you 100%. You have to, it's your responsibility to take 20% of that and make sure that your future is secured. You know, some people do more than that. You know, you, you know, this is a 50, 30, 20, but if your thirties are are very low and you don't have 30% of wants, you only have 10% of wants. Well, now that 20% of savings turns into a 40% savings, but that that's another thing. Just stick to 50, 30, 20 is what the important thing is. Okay. So now What does that mean? That means that if you have $2,000 that you get paid a month, right? You take $1,000, right? You have $1,000 that you need, that you can spend on your rent, your groceries, your utilities, your health insurance, your car payment, your car insurance, your needs. Now, some of you may say, well, $1,000 isn't a lot of money for all that stuff. Well, you're absolutely right. It's not a lot of money for all that stuff. So if you're in high school or you're in college and you're not out in the real world now, now is the time to do your 50, 30, 20 to say, okay, I'm going to make X amount of dollars or I currently make X amount of dollars. And if I'm making $2,000 and I um, can only spend $1,000 for mortgage, groceries, utilities, and health insurance, car payment, so on and so forth. Well, maybe that means I can't afford a car payment right now. So I'm not going to jump into buying a brand new car because I can't afford it. Maybe I have to take the bus or take the, take a walk or ride a bicycle or do whatever. So you can make these numbers work. If you have a thousand dollars, that means that you can't have a thousand dollar mortgage because if you have a thousand dollar mortgage or a thousand dollar rent, that means you don't have money for groceries or you don't have money for, for, you know, utilities or any of these other things. So you, you have to fall within this 50%. If you have a thousand dollar budget, now you take that thousand dollars for your 50% and you say to yourself, okay, how much is it going to take for me to eat? Now, if I eat at a grocery store, meaning I'm going to buy pasta and I'm going to buy fruits and vegetables, and I'm going to buy some things that are kind of a little expensive being fruits and vegetables and some things that are less expensive being pasta and you know, that kind of stuff. And I'm going to have a decent mix. Well, what will it cost you to feed yourself? If you, if it's just you, I don't know, 50 bucks a week, a hundred bucks a week. I'm I'm not sure. Let's just say, let's say 50 bucks a week. You know, if you're going to go, let's say a hundred, we'll say a hundred bucks a week. That's $400 in a month. So $400 just in food alone means out of your thousand dollars that you, you only have $600 left. So now what's it going to cost you for utilities? Let's say another hundred dollars, right? Not, not cable and all that stuff, just your basic, you know, cable or basic utilities. That's another, um, another hundred bucks. So that's $500. So that means if you don't have a car insurance and your work isn't pulling out health insurance, that means for rent, you only have $500 left. So you either have to live in a $500 apartment or you have to figure out how you're going to wait to stay where you are until you get promoted, until you make more money, until you can figure it all out because otherwise it doesn't fall into your budget. So you can't jump off the branch. You can't leap and start learning to fly and all that other stuff and start your life off in debt. 
And if if you're somebody who's already you know established and all that other stuff, this is a great budget to get you back on play uh, on on track. And if that means that you live in a, an apartment now and it costs a thousand dollars and you can't figure out why your money is not making sense, well, th- this might be the reason. So you have to take your thousand dollars, or or now that you're in a you're in a lease, maybe that means that instead of a thousand dollar lease, that you start looking for another place that's eight hundred dollars and you save a couple hundred dollars to fall into this 50%, all right? So you got $1,000 for, for those things, for rent or mortgage or groceries, utilities, healthcare, car payment, car insurance. That's what that $1,000 is, right? So now you move to 30. $30, oh, 30%, 30% gives you $600. $600 for your cable bill, right? Some people have basic cable. Some people want super duper cable. It has all these, you know, movie channels and all that other stuff. You have to figure out where in your wants that falls into your budget, right? So if you have $600, obviously you can't have a $500 cable payment. You know what I mean? That would just be ludicrous and wouldn't be very, very intelligent, you know? So you have your cable bill, you have your extra clothes, you know what I mean? Like if you wanna, you know, get a, you know, you can go to this place and you can get a winter jacket um, for 50 bucks, or you can go to this place and you can get a nicer winter jacket for a hundred bucks, you know? This is where that, that, extra money, you know, comes out of, um, your Starbucks habit, you know, comes out of this money, your, um, your gas money surprisingly comes out of this because you don't have to have gas money. It's not a need. You could take the bus, you could carpool, you could ride a bike, you could walk, you could, I don't know, do other things. You don't have to have a car, you know, so your gas money is going to come out of this. Now, $600 may sound like a lot, but if you start taking the things that you spend on wants on a month, I guarantee you're going to blow through this 30%. There's no question about it, right? So now that's $600. You add that up and you say, okay, well, um, all right, well, $600 are my wants. I'm either saving money or I'm, I, I'm, I got to cut some corners somewhere or something. So, you know, write that stuff down and figure out where your $600 goes. And then you have your 20%, which is, your, which is now $400, right? So you have two thousand. A thousand goes to rent. Six hundred dollars goes to wants. Four hundred dollars now is going to go to debt repaying. So now you take the four hundred dollars and you break it down. What are your credit card payments? Um, what is your emergency fund? What are your plans for the future savings? What is your retirement um, savings? What kind of vacation savings do you want to have? All of these savings now go into the twenty percent, right? So you can have a better understanding on where this money needs to go. So this works with any amount of money. If you make $5,000 a month, well, just break it down 50, 30, 20. If you make $1,000 a month, break it down 50, 30, 20. The best time to do this is when you're planning for the future. You don't move into a $5,000 house and then realize you only make $3,000. You know, you don't, you know, um, you don't eat at, you know, um, Chick-fil-A every day of the week or three times a day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, except on Sundays, obviously, because they're closed. It's breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then think that, you know, oh, well, you know, I can't figure out where all my money's going, you know? So you have to have a a decent understanding on where your money goes, how much money you make, and where you want it to go. And by breaking it down line by line and having a good understanding on what falls into the 50%, what falls into the 30%, and what falls into the 20%, it gives you a great visual to see like, wow, I didn't realize that I was spending $800 a month at Starbucks. That's bonkers. You know what I mean? And um, it goes very, very quick. So get a pad of paper, get a pen, and write down all your expenses, everything that you spend in a month that you can think of, you know? And then next to that, put if it's a want, if it's a need, or if it's for savings or debt um, repayment. Once you have all of that, then separate them. Separate them into wants, needs, and debt repayment. Once you have all of that in those three categories, all you have to do is write above it 50%, 30%, and 20%. Then you take those numbers and you take the amount of money that you make each month, and you write down how much money you make a month, and then you take 50% of that off, take 30% of that off, take 20% of that off, and just divide all that stuff and to figure out if you're within a budget or nowhere close to a budget. So comment below and let me know if anybody's gonna try this and and see if it works. And I would like to know 
how it's worked for you and the changes that you might have made to it to um, to better suit your scenario or suit your situation. Now, what does that mean? This 50, 30, 20 is, is a great budget to have, but it's not a say all and do all. Meaning that if you're in the position right now where, um, where your 30% is actually 15% or your 30% is that the $600 seems like way more than you need. Or if your 50% is you're like, wow, I only have $1,000. I have to have at least 1200. I have to in the situation I'm in right now. Otherwise I won't survive. So for a, a, a temporary solution, you can take some of the percentage or some of the money from the 30. Like if you, if you have a thousand dollars for your 50 and you need 1200, you can take that 1200 from the, from the 600, from the 30%, um, and put it in a, for, uh, a temporary. And so you could solve your 50%. The whole goal of this is solving the 50, 30, and 20. It's not to do this math and to figure this all out and go, oh, no, that doesn't work. Because once you see, mm, no, that doesn't work. And I can guarantee you this. If your bills aren't being paid now, if you're not having ex extra money at the end of the month, then you're not doing something right. Your budget is not right. You're either living out of your means, you're spending more than you should on things you shouldn't be spending it on, or whatever. So this 50, 30, 20 is a, a problem solution for you to solve. This is for you to say, okay, wow, I'm nowhere near that 50. Holy smokes, I'm, I'm doubling on the 30. Or, you know what, I got zero at the 20. So now, how do I make all this work? How do I make it work to where my 50 truly is 50, my 30 truly is 30, and my 20 truly is 20? And you'll find that it will bring you a great deal of happiness when you start realizing that you do have emergency funds. You are slowly or quickly getting yourself out of debt. And you have a future plan for yourself, whether it's kids' education that you want to plan, whether it's, uh, you know, a great vacation that you want to plan or, you know, retirement or whatever it is that you're actually planning for it. You'll find yourself starting to get motivated when you're like, wow, this is actually working and it's going to make you want to do it more and more and more. So definitely look into it. Give it a shot. I'm interested in how it works for you. And I'm telling you, if you follow the 50, 30, 20 to the T, you will find yourself successful.